Thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. The Oscars have not been good for a while now. And I'm not saying that in a go woke, go broke kind of way. I mean, for one, the Oscars have been going woke for the last 20 years. And two, it's just stupid. There's no real general consensus on what makes a movie Oscar worthy. And yet 19 year olds around the country in college dorms will still grease their pants when they find out that Killer of the Flower Moon took home the golden Vin Diesel. It's an overly exclusive three hour long circle jerk that makes everyone feel like they have to watch it in order to keep up with pop culture. But it takes up so much goddamn time. It takes up half a night. It could easily be a PowerPoint that you get sent in an email later in the day. But how did we get to the point of an annual Hunger Games level display of wealth and system gaming? Well, I will tell you my sweet little sweet audience babies. The year is 1929. People are discovering how to use cameras and it's become such a hobby that someone had the idea to hand out trophies about it. Thus, the first Oscars were born with a ceremony that only lasted 15 minutes, something that could easily be done today, except for the fact that they have to find ad space for movies in between the one long ad for movies. It also only used to cost $5 to go to the Oscars and nowadays, I looked it up, you can't even find the prices of what an Oscar ticket costs and that usually means it costs an ungodly amount, like buy a boat and don't use it kind of money. Also, if you didn't already know, Oscars are not the real name for the ceremony. It's technically called the Academy Awards, something that confused 10 year old Tucker as much as it confuses 26 year old Tucker. For the longest time, I thought these were two different award shows and every year I just happened to miss one of them. I might be an idiot, but this is not good branding. But where did the name Oscar come from, you ask? Well, it is the dumbest origin story of all time. You'd think they would name it Oscar after a great filmmaker, or at least it was an inside industry joke at the time. But no, it's credited to Margaret Herrick, the Academy's first librarian, uh, known for being fun, those librarians. The story goes, that the librarian looked at the statue and said, huh, that reminds me of my uncle Oscar. And then they just started calling it the Oscars. That's the whole story. That's all of it. Well, how anticlimactic. You know something's gonna be great when it starts out sucking that much, but you know it doesn't suck? This segue to our sponsor. You guys watch LTT? So I'm gonna be really honest with you guys for a quick second. I got pretty distracted while editing this video because I discovered the vehicle combat game War Thunder to the point where uh, this video might come out late. I'm not kidding. If, if it comes out on time, that means I stayed up for 36 hours straight just to get the edit out because I've been focusing on the wrong things. But the game is really fun. It started out as an innocent little gaming break and then suddenly I was at command of 2,500 ships, tanks, planes, and helicopters. At one point, I'm a 1920s rapscallion that's flying around in biplanes and armored cars. Then I thought to myself, this game would be a lot better if it had 21st century combat vehicles and then there you go I'm flying around in fighter jets and driving combat tanks I am become death destroyer of online opponents I like my PvP games like I like my bedroom decor specifically tailored to me War Thunder gives you completely personalized player experience it's got three distinct modes arcade for people who like fast-paced matches as well as enhanced vehicle performance and simplified physics then we have realistic mode which strikes a balance between authenticity and intensity and then there's simulator mode which ditches all guardrails for the ultimate experience I cannot I'm not good at this one. I need I need someone to hold my hand a little bit. Good lord. But some people love that. So, you know, to each their own. The game's made for everybody. At the end of the day, you're driving incredibly detailed vehicles from 10 major nations, realistic graphics, and authentic sound effects that place you right at the helm of death machine. Personally, I hate when I find a new game that I love and all two of my friends won't download it even though it's free just because they're lazy and being dicks to me. So hopefully you guys can hop on and go nutty with me on the stick. I provide you with a link in my description for both new and returning players. Anyone who logs in with a brand new account or returns to their original account that hasn't been played on in six months using my link will get a bunch of sweet, sweet goodies. This link is your metaphorical key to join a community of 70 million players on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation for literally zero dollars. And what does this key also give you? Well, a bunch of cool things that War Thunder told me I could give you if you guys are low-key and chill about it. We're talking exclusive access to 100,000 silver lions, seven days of premium account access, an exclusive Eagle of Valor vehicle decorator. That was hard to say, but it is cool. So go ahead and give that link in the description a fat click if you want to have fun with vehicles without buying a car or booking through Delta. And thank you to War Thunder for making a combat game that puts you at the center of the most powerful war machines of our time. I'm gonna say, I gotta start making gaming content. I don't think my audience understands how much of a basement dwelling gamer I actually am. Another aspect of the Oscars that I can't stand is the damn red carpet. Just a bunch of fancy people wearing outfits someone else picked out for them, like a toddler on the first day of school. Then the paparazzi's all scrambling, throwing bows, and breaking noses to ask Timothy Chalamet what he's most excited for tonight. Give me a break. And also, when they do get an interview with a celebrity, it's rarely worth listening to. It's normally the most bonkers shit you've ever heard in your life. And you know why that is? Say it with me, class. It's because actors and actresses are riddled with men mental illness and narcissism. Just listen to these examples I pulled of the worst people saying the worst things. One time an E! Entertainment reporter, which is an oxymoron, asked Jim Carrey what he was excited for at the Oscars. He said, and I quote, there's no meaning to any of this. I wanted to find the most meaningless thing I could come to and join and here I am. 
Yeah, oh, did you forget your fedora at home, edgelord? I mean, listen, I agree with what he said. That's the whole point of the video that I'm making. But he's not saying it honestly. It's hard to say what I'm trying to say here. You know that kid who didn't go to prom, but he kept telling you that the reason he's not going is because it's just an exercise in teenage futility? Like, I get it, you know, believe in your beliefs, but you're just kind of performing right now, and it's super obnoxious. Or how about at the 2015 Oscars? Uh, someone asked Dakota Johnson's mom, Melanie Griffith, which I didn't know was her mom until I wrote this script, if she had seen her daughter's performance in Fifty Shades of Grey. But what she was really asking her mom was, hey, did you check out your daughter being a slut on film? I mean, Jesus Christ, why would you ask that? Why would you ask anyone that? Melanie Griffith replied, that's a hard name to say. Well, she's a really good actress. I don't need to see that. I don't need to see how good she is. Yikes, dude. Only in Hollywood would someone ask someone else's mom if they've seen their daughter fake an orgasm, and only in Hollywood would the mother respond. What the hell's going on over there? And of course we have Hugh Grant, the most charmingly awkward man alive at the 2023 Oscars, giving us one of the most painstakingly awkward interviews. Are you excited to see anybody win? Do you have your hopes up for anyone? Um, not, not no, no one in particular. Okay, what are you wearing tonight then? Just my suit. Your suit? Who yeah. made your suit? You didn't make it. Um, I can't remember. My tailor. That's okay. Yeah. Ta shout out to the tailor. Yeah. Um, what does it feel like to be in Glass Onion? Well, I'm barely in it. I'm in it for about three seconds. You know what? I fuck with this heavy. I really, it's not like Jim Carrey where he's pretending not to care. I really think Hugh Grant has been done with his job for like the last 20 years. I think he's just collecting paychecks now and I gotta appreciate that. Another part of the Oscars that is stupid is of course the whole reason people show up to this thing, which is the awards themselves. Now, I don't want to spend the next couple minutes trashing on somebody who in their field has been working towards the highest honor they can achieve through, you know, hard work and success. Uh, but here I go. I mean, first of all, a movie or an actor winning an Oscar can do a lot for them, and I'm talking financially. And much like the refs in the NBA, if you can earn money by fixing a system, a lot of people are gonna do that. A lot of people are gonna jump in on that opportunity. When you win an Oscar, you don't just win an Oscar. There is a lot of things that go behind winning an Oscar that are all shady and poopy. Just a heads up, everything I'm about to talk about, I learned from an episode of Adam Ruins Everything. He talked about the Oscars and how awful they are, and it changed my life back in 2016, so I'm gonna pass the savings on to you. I love Dropout, I love Adam, please don't yell at me. Production companies spend millions upon millions of dollars throwing up ads everywhere in LA saying that, hey, this movie should win the Oscar. Hey, this guy, he should win an Oscar. This subconsciously influences voters to think a little bit harder about how Mark Ruffy should maybe win the gold this year. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to, you know, bribing their way into winning the Oscar. These studios pay for expensive ass, lavish parties that, you know, any voter can come to and mingle with the elites and also meet the people you might vote for face to face. You tell me how you'd vote for anyone else after having a five minute conversation with Emma Stone. I would never want to hurt her. She deserves the win. The voters also also get free copies of the movie, obviously, so they know what they're voting on, but when they send them the free copies of the movies, they get free gifts too, like they can get an iPad with their movie, which is, you know, not technically a bribe, it's not cash, but it's obviously something shady. And also, side note, who the fuck is voting for these things? Who, who's in charge of vote? I mean, look at this guy. He can vote, why can't I vote? I feel like, I, I like movies, I've seen Fantastic Mr. Fox like 200 times. So yeah, you might have acted your heart out in that one very political and on the nose role, but at the end of the day, you only get that Oscar if someone pays a lot of money for it to happen. Kinda like a politician getting elected in America, right guys? What's up with that? Why do politicians have at least $20 million laying around just to get a campaign going and then they finally get into office and they start making a lot more money? You're, you're, what, where is that money coming from? I mean, we all know where it's coming from. It's coming from like stock trading and you know, insider deals, but it's kind of messed up that we all just let that happen. I mean, like ber what Bernie has like a three mansions. Why is that? And what do these people do once they corruptly win their big award? Well, they get on stage and they give a little speech. That's what we're all here for, baby. Looking at shiny people say big words. You can go the Leo route where you say something about the environment. Climate change is real. It is happening right now. Or you can go to the Joe Pesci route and not really say anything at all. My privilege, thank you. Baller move, Mr. Pesci, baller move. But then some people just get a little friggin' weird about it, dude. For example, eccentric weirdo, who I do love, Joaquin Phoenix, went a little bit off the rails when he got his medal, Mr. Clean. I'm just gonna read verbatim what he said, and you guys in the comments tell me what you think about this, because it's kind of terrifying. I think that we've become very disconnected from the natural world, and many of us are, what we're guilty of is an egocentric worldview, the belief that we're the center of the universe. We go into the natural world and we plunder it for its resources. We feel entitled to artificially inseminate a cow, and when she gives birth, we steal her baby, even though her cries of anger which are unmistakable, and then we take her milk, and that's intended for a calf, and we put it in our coffee and our cereal. Everyone has goals, if nothing else, to obtain the physical necessity of life. Food, water, and whatever clothing and shelter made necessary by the climate, but the leisure of the aristocracy obtain these things without effort, hence his boredom and demolarization. I mean, good lord, Walkie, what are you talking about? That was word for word what he said uh, on the stage, except for that last part, that was from the Unabomber's manifesto. But it fit in perfectly, and that's the point I'm trying to make. And then we have Angelina Jolie, who won uh, Best Supporting Actress and Girl interrupted, never heard of that movie. But things got really weird really quick when at the beginning of her speech she said, uh, I'm so in love with my brother right now, 
which is odd. Uh, you know, some families are a little different, but that's an odd thing to say. And that would be the end of it, except at the after party, the Vanity Fair after party, she got in front of a camera and kissed her brother on the lips. So, you know, Angelina, what are you doing, girl? I guess if you can have any man, you start to look for the men that you can't have. If that makes sense. Oh, and then we have the In Memoriam segment, which is, that makes me both really sad and really angry at the same time. If you don't know, the In Memoriam segment is the part where famous people die and they put it up on a PowerPoint slideshow and everyone, you know, gets sad about it. I mean, we lost a lot of famous people this year, so it's probably gonna be pretty long. I mean, we lost Pee Wee Herman, Angus Cloud, uh, you know, who else? Captain Holt from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. He wasn't in movies, I don't think, but I hope they gave him his flower. But the reason this segment makes me so upset is because they don't hold for applause. They don't tell people not to clap during the whole thing. Like, they'll throw up the big dogs, the people who, you know, you actually recognize, and everyone will clap in the audience, and then they'll put up, like, a boom mic operator who is really important in the industry and no one knows who he is, and it's, it's crickets. It's dead silence. Why would you do that? Wait till the end to applaud. Just imagine being at the Oscars, and you're, you're sitting there enjoying your drink, and all of a sudden... And also, you shouldn't be cheering for a dead guy regardless. It's a weird ritual we do. So those are all the reasons why the Oscars make me mad. I could have probably found more reasons, uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, this was more of a stream of conscious video. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to, like, segment it into different acts. This is probably just going to be a one long uh, mouth diarrhea. With all that being said, have fun and watch the Oscars. It is pretty fun, especially because of the hosts and the, the presenters that make it fun and actually put effort in. Just make sure not to worship the people up on stage, because they're actors, they will manipulate you, they're really not that important, and they don't say anything worth hearing. So, there you go. They're all flying private chats and telling you to use paper straws anyway so new videos every saturday like comment and subscribe if you love me here's a clip of my cat knocking over my light earlier today that sucked jesus <laughs> jesus Christ. and again thank you to war thunder for sponsoring this video don't forget to play it free on pc playstation or xbox now by using my link in the pinned comment or a video description new and returning players that haven't played in six months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms including multiple premium vehicles and other goodies available for a limited time only so make sure not to miss it Woo!